All right, all right, family. Welcome back to another installment of the STEM Files, where we highlight the best and brightest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. On tonight's episode, we talk with my big bro and new farmer, Brother Michael J.H. Muhammad, on how to use your land. Tune in for more of this dynamic discussion after this. All right, all right. Again, family, welcome back to the STEM Files. We, we are the voice of STEM talent in Black culture. On tonight's episode again, well, for tonight's episode, remember that we are Jabrain Engineer and Tariq Cardiac, the, again, the voice of STEM talent in Black culture, every Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Everyone, remember to like, comment, and share on tonight's show. We are live on Facebook Live as well as YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The STEM Files on YouTube. And follow us on Instagram at The STEM Files. I am your co host, Jabril Muhammad, aka Jabrillian Engineer, a mechanical engineer on focusing on naval ship fluid systems with a bacterial science and engineering. I am typically joined by my illustrious co host, Brother Tariq Muhammad, aka Tariq Cardiac. He is a biomedical research scientist with a background in cardiovascular pathobiology, which is the study of how diseases form in the blood vessels and the heart but like we always say tonight's show or any show is not about us you guys know enough about us what you don't know is about our wonderful wonderful guests that we have on the show and without further ado i want to introduce my big brother my friend my mentor brother michael j h mm -hmm. muhammad assalamu alaikum big bro what's going on all oh, praises is due to allah wa alaikum salam big I can't brother hear you again big mike something happened with your sound the... Oh, there you go. All good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Good. All praises is due to Allah. Um, Assalamu alaikum, big bro. I'm doing well, man. I'm just honored and humbled to be on such a platform with yourself, man. This is uh going to be something I will remember for the rest of my life. So, yes, sir. Let's let's get right into it, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, fam, like you were saying, we're excited. I hope you know, bought some notepads and like can learn a little bit about bro's journey and land acquisition as we move forward tonight. So without further ado, I wanna go a bit into brother's background, his bio, and then we'll get into some uh, good wholesome questioning after this. Please. So again, brothers, Michael J. H. Muhammad, third generation believer in the nation of Islam, all praise due to Allah, graduated high school at the age of 16 and had desires to become a neurosurgeon. He attended Penn State University, but did not unfinish, started at I started a family while in college at the age of 19 and took his life in a different direction. And he currently works in construction as a project manager and owns his own construction management firm. Now, all praise to Allah, he has the responsibility of a farmer. Definitely yes. a unique story, big bro. And we want to kind of get right into it. So uh, for all those listening, why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, what attracted you to owning land, acquiring mm. a little bit of your journey into the farm that you now possess? Well, and uh, if I could begin in the name of a lot of the beneficent, the merciful, um, man, it was literally the uh, minister's guidance and teachings to us. He's been telling us for years and years to go out and purchase land, go out, get land, get land, get land. And I did not want to allow our minister to depart from us and not do exactly what he's been telling us to do while he was present, uh, present amongst us. So the, 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 uh, the, the initial desire was sparked in legitimately September of this, of, of 2020. Um, I mean, uh, 2019. And uh, it took us about three months. And within just a few short months, by December the uh, 10th, 1210, we were unlocking the doors of our new land, um, 22 acres of land. Um, uh, about 15 of it is all open field. About five acres is probably within, you know, you have wooded areas. We have a half an acre 
pond um, that is a vernal pond that goes uh, about 26 feet deep when it's at its, di um, its deepest. Um, and uh, there's a lot of wildlife, natural wildlife here. And then we just started doing everything else and going deeper into trying to make this vision a reality, sir. All oh, praise due to a lot. Yes. To drop there again. This is the stem file, so we like to make sure that when terms are dropped, that we unpack those terms, give definitions for people that may not know. So you mentioned that on your land, which is how many? Uh, how how big? How many um, acres do you have, beloved? Twenty-two acres by law's permission. Yes, sir. Twenty-two acres. And if Twenty-two you, acres. All praise due to a lot from praise be to a lot. We learned that an acre is about a football field. So brother who is also under 40, but you think closer to 16 because of how yeah. he looks, right? Praise be to Allah. <laughs> 22 football fields acquired for his family and our nation, all praise be to Allah. Praise so, be to Allah. What does a vernal mean? When you say a vernal pond, what does that mean? Well, a vernal pond, if you can remember uh, the Lion King or any Discovery Channel show that you may have watched, it's the pond or the water hole. That all the animals in the area venture to. So the vernal pond is a seasonal pond that has the uh, that that goes up and down during season. It's not your standalone pond that will contain water because it's been man-made to, uh, to 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 do that. It will legitimately be filled up by a certain season, and if that season begins to dry out, the nature begins to take its course, and the water begins to draw to the to the lowest part and find its way out. To another area, um, you know, somewhere else. So a vernal pond is just a pond that goes that uh that is filled with season and can be dry with uh with uh with, with season as well. All oh, praises due to Allah. Learning something every day. And part of me, yes, sir. My excitement. I forgot to today is actually a special day, and I'm, I'm glad to spend it with my brother. So praise be to Allah. All oh, praises due to Allah. The four year anniversary of the show. Woo! Files. However, <laughs> today is actually the anniversary of our very first episode. Actual wow. Episode. wow. All Talk Radio. We had a brother, uh, Shantane X, who was an electrical engineer, and the and the uh, title of the show was Lightning in His Hands. Mm. That's so powerful transitioning to today. Because when wow. we think lightning, we think about we think about electricity, we think about light, but we ultimately think about power. So I want to discuss today. The power hmm. of owning your own land, acquiring it, and being able to utilize wow. yourself, your family. So, beloved, um, you know, you do some some interesting things, you know, with your land. My wife and I had the pleasure of being out yes. with your family uh, in uh, out in Lehigh, in PA, which is where your own farm is, to do yes. an overnight stay, uh, hmm. get, get some camping experience, but as well as do a survival training. So, I, I want to talk about the science of survival. Why that's what that is. And why it's so important for us to really understand in general, but today. Well, you know, let's think of the word survival. To survive something, it means something is uh, happening or right. is in, in process of happening or could happen that is causing you to go into a certain realm of thinking that makes you need to survive. So this land is a part of survival. We can't survive as a people if we don't own something that we can call our own on, especially when the land that we do have, we live on, does not belong to us and we know that it belongs to our open enemy. So if we're looking at the course of the word survival in the, in the grand scheme of things and then connect that word survival to that which has been told that we should do as an instruction from our teachings and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in getting land. He's telling us that because it is our way of surviving and getting to the hereafter safely on his shoulders because we have something of our own that is no longer in the grips of the enemy that will allow us to be able to maneuver around some of his uh, uh, already plotted plans. When you are off his territory, he now can't do things to you that he would be able to do to you if you were on his territory. So getting this land has caused me to understand life and nature in, in a much different way than I've ever experienced before. So I'm so thankful for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for giving us such an instruction and such a challenge to even 
thrive towards. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Family, I'm I'm just I'm overjoyed because I'm like <laughs> trying to keep all my thoughts together. And yes, you and me both. Because I have so many questions. You know, one of the things that we're taught, particularly in the nation of Islam, and really intelligent people know and understand is to study creation. You yes. Know, a lot of what we talk about in STEM stems from, pun intended, what mm. we see all around us. Right. We talked a little bit about on our last show the difference between a scientist and an engineer. And when we think about it, most mm. of people, whether they be whatever area in STEM that they're in, they do have a level of scientific know-how and are scientists in some way, shape, or form. So going mm. to your land and your and your desire to understand what's around you, what it can be used for, mm. and how it can be implemented. Can you speak to us about you know some of the wildlife, particularly in the plants? Some of the, one of the things we did, we actually did plant identification. So what types of plants do you have in, um, on your property, and what are some of the uh, benefits for um, human beings that they may have when prepared in different ways? Wow, good question. Well, <clears throat> let's put it this way. I can't tell you all the plants that I have on my land because I have not yet discovered them all yet. That's right. But the ones, <laughs> but the ones that we have come across in discovery, um, is man, there's a list of yes, them. Yes. But I'll name one of some of the top ones. We found grapes in 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 the last two weeks. I mean, I've been here since December. Um, so you're talking about just approaching a year and two weeks ago, we found grapes that we didn't even know we had. Um, we have grapes, Concord grapes around the property. Yes, sir. We didn't know we had peaches. We didn't know we had blueberries. We didn't know we had blackberries. We didn't know we had raspberries. We didn't know we had uh, another type of olive called an autumn olive that the majority of the people around us, the neighbors thought they were a poisonous plant and was proceeding to tell us don't eat those until I did my own research and was able to find out with this, um, in that research that these were not a poisonous plant. In fact, it was an edible plant and fully and, 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 and majorly uh, beneficial to the human body. Can make jam and different uh, things out of it. And it, some of the believers was able to taste it and it was very good. <laughs> so we found those things. We found... Um, uh, Red potatoes buried under the soil, thousands of them when we first moved here. Didn't even know they, they were here. We found uh, a goldenrod plant all over the property. You see it all over the place. It's a plant that is used for medicinal purposes, for many things, nausea, um, for digestive issues, headaches. Um, we found a plant that you may be familiar with on Harry Potter, mugwort tea. A uh, mugwort that you can make a tea out of that does major things and uh, many things allows it it can uh, uh, um, regulate women's menstrual cycles. Mm. So that's a big thing, you know. Yes, it does a lot of things. Uh, we found uh, many different medicinal plants, and we're still just grazing. We haven't even grazed the 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 potential of what this property has has for us. And I'll say this before you go on to the next question and we go further in the discussion, the individual we purchased the land from, he said, you know, there's some things on this property that I could tell you about, but I won't. There'll be a surprise for you when the seasons progress. We didn't know what he was talking about. There was so many trees I wanted to get rid of. I had a landscaper here to cut these trees down. Right. And they left them and told me that was this, this was that. Before we knew it, as time went on and we got closer to the spring and closer to the summer, we started finding things. And I was so happy that we did not do uh, go too far in destroying certain things that would have been beneficial to us. So um, that, you know, I hope that answers your question, man. And we, it's many more. And I would encourage the believers to come here to help us because it's been the believers uh uh, help in finding things on the property. It ain't just been us. They've been coming and saying, what is that? We all pull out our phones, go to the app, we take a picture of it, and we say, wow, look at this. We found Indian hemp when you was here. Bro, I was just about to mention that. So you got to mention the Indian hemp. We man. found Indian hemp. So, you know, if you know anything about Indian hemp, you put that in the grease, you could do so many things. You can take the silkiness, the silky fibers that's within the plant and make handbags and hairnets. So, 
there's so much here that we still don't know what exists. And that's the beautiful power is the is going out and to study the 196,940,000 square miles. Mm, mm, mm. And it's funny <laughs> that you mentioned that, right? The so 196,940,000 square miles the land of land and water. 55,000 square miles, right? And yes. About useful land, the land that we can produce upon. 29 million. And I'm sure so you bear witness in our teachings that, you know, um, big fields await the wide awake man to work out in. Now, we can yes. be literal. Yes. You literally have big fields. Yes. Wide awake <laughs> men are striving to be able to see what's upon or embedded in these fields to then work out and have people of like minds come and do the same thing. I know yes. we talked about beekeeping, something that I'm growing and passionate about. To see. yes, we on, on one thing we're going to get into actually right after this animal husbandry and the things you're mm. going to do there. Yeah. So, uh, and and brother has opened up his farm. It's uh, MSGLV Farms. That's Muhammad Study Group, Lehigh Valley Farms. Brother, yes, Lehigh in PA again, 22 acres, and have acquired uh, more since then. Brother yes, praise be to Allah. Um, all praises to a lot and really assist him to move the project forward to do a number of different things so mm. i want to tackle something else with you so you know being a new farmer right and something that not only being a farmer but having your own land something that a lot of people ascribe to doing mm. you know you what you, you work every day you know you, yeah. you you're up you know saying you're working throughout the day whether it's you know uh you're cleaning out the natural fertilizer making sure it's not all over the place Make sure your um, different animals are taken care of. Yes. What livestock do you have? And can you talk to us about what you learned as it pertains to animal husbandry <laughs> with your different animals? Man, beautiful question. You know, it's just still strange to hear the word farmer in relation to myself. So I'm still trying to get accustomed to that. It's like, that's me he's talking about. That's us. Okay, I guess I am. <laughs> so as far as livestock, we have two of every kind in the sense of what a farm usually would have outside of the pig, of course. Um, we do have two horses, male and female, which is the mother and the uh, her baby, her colt. Um, we have two female sheep, Dorset uh, Merino sheep, which make a very high quality wool. Um, the exact same wool, in fact, that is used in your Ugg boots. So that light color wool that's in your Ugg boots is the same wool from the sheep that we have here in which we already have from their from shearing their mother. We have about 60 pounds of raw, unused wool that uh, is available as well to, you know, for things down the road. Um, we have two goats, male and female, Nubian goats, uh, full breed um, one is five years old and the other one is two. We have three Jersey cows, mother and her uh, bull son, young son, young bull, and a miniature Jersey cow, which is about six, seven months now. Um, so that's two females and one male. We have two ducks, uh, two khaki Campbell ducks. They're two, they're both females and we have a host of ends of different species, uh, different breeds. And thanks to Sister Farmer Courtney, she came down this past weekend and gifted us with some more hens and actually now two more cats, a male and a female. So we have a cat to two and two guard dogs as well. So we're growing and the goal is to continue to move forward. The next particular livestock we would like to have is alpaca. And um, I'm working right now with some uh, brother out in uh, California. Uh, who is uh, does alpaca husbandry to go and try to get some science and some study from him in regards to these particular animals? Oh yes, sir. All praise due to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Family, family, family. Listen, we we twenty minutes in, and I, I'm looking at the comments. Where my questions at, family? family <laughs> drop a question, comment, even a concern. Why do I have land? Well, listen, brother got land and everything. Took a chance on himself, went out and got it. But please mm. drop your questions, anything that yes. you have. We are monitoring the uh, comments and want to make sure we answer any concerns that you may have or anything so that you can um, potentially go out and acquire your own land, farm. Yes. Um, so when we think about animal husbandry, right, it's, it's more than just having a pet. 
right? We some people mm. like dog, cat, fish, lizard, hermit crab, snake, exotic things of sorts, right? But right. You are charged with being what's called an animal husband. And can we can you kind of go kind of unpack that term a little bit more in terms of the husband portion from being Ooh. a husband yourself, all praise is due to a lot. All praise is due that to kind of Allah. relates to your animals and, and as you have several kinds. Good question. You know, man, when Allah gives you, puts you in a position to be responsible for his creation, it's something extremely humbling because you begin to think about how Allah has to be responsible or is responsible for an entire universe. That's right. So just on a tiny scale of having to be responsible for horses and cows and sheep and goats and chickens and ducks, you just, and you know, it, it becomes a mixture of different personalities, different characteristics, different likes, different dislikes. And uh, everybody is, you know, uh, has these kinds of differences that you have to find a way to be able to accommodate all of their needs on time. And they can't talk to you the same way um, your wife can talk to you or your children can talk to you. They use body language. They use right. sounds. They use grunts. They do things that make you know that they are in need of something. And you have to begin to understand what those sounds and grunts, body languages mean. And right. that takes time within itself, which I still haven't come to full terms. But my cow, for example, the, 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 uh, the, the large one that I have, the female Jersey cow, two-year-old, she has a, you know, an amazing characteristic and personality. She'll literally let you know that she's jealous and she doesn't hide it. If you're playing with one of the horses too long, she'll come up to you from all the way on the other side of the field and bump you and right. nudge right. you. I like, got bumped. I got bumped. <laughs> the tent up and I, yeah. like, I thought somebody legit pushed me. So I'm like, yeah. I look back, I'm like, Olivia. <laughs> you know, then I realized, well, she is young. You know what I'm yes. she's, like, she's like an adolescent wanting attention. But I exactly. Exactly. <laughs> she wants attention and she right. yearns for it. So having her has found has caused me and my wife to want to go deeper into why the cow is in the Quran as a whole surah. What was the reason for the God placing the cow in the Quran? So there's certain characteristics about her that is very similar to females, human female. You right. know, so there's husbandry with her. I got to milk her twice a day. If I don't, she'll get very angry with me. She'll get agitated. Her bag gets full. It, it bothers her. It irritates her. So I go out early in the morning and I go out later in the evening and we do some milking. And that allows us to obviously continue to have milk. But he also needs a break. You can't milk a cow or you shouldn't milk a cow because you can, but you shouldn't milk a cow all year long. You should give them some time to break and recover from that because you're pulling on them all year long, all day. No woman wants to be milked forever. They want time. <laughs> and because we think, you know, you're an animal, you can take that. No, they're a living creature that has nerve right. endings just like you. It hurts, you know? So I'm learning that with her and we're just about to come to that point in time of the year where she needs a break. So milk production will stop for a few months for the winter. Why? Because she needs time to recover from all of that pulling. Um, horses, they need their hoofs trimmed. They need their nails done. They need horseshoes to be placed on them. Why? Because they're, you know, working around rough terrain. All of that things has to happen. Our goats, I had to just cut my goat off the other week. And it has to be done on a regular basis. Like once a month, I got to go out there and cut, cut nails of my animals. Like, you know, like I'm at a salon, I gotta trim certain things. I have to uh, go out and clean the the uh, the environment that they live in. I can't allow them to say, oh, they're animals and let them live in their poo. That is not fair. You we wouldn't wanna do it and no. they don't wanna do it. And these animals will legitimately tell you, this is nasty, okay? 
So I need you to clean that up. A horse would not walk in her own stuff without, you know, by by want. You can force them to, but they don't want to, and they'll let you know that they're very irritated with their with their environment. Um, the sheep, out of all the animals, are the most fragile animal. I didn't know how fragile, I mean, not fragile, but um, agile animal. They can do things that I didn't know a sheep can do. They are extremely intelligent animals. They have found ways before everybody, all the other animals did, to get through my electric fence without, they realize that their wool is thick enough. That when they go through the fence, it does it, it doesn't penetrate them. So now they have called some of my animals to try to figure it out too, because the other animals are watching them go through the fence and wonder like, hey, why why they didn't get hurt? So I'm learning with them certain things. I'm learning with my hens, you know, certain aspects of the husbandry. But the reality is, is understanding their needs and attending to their needs and doing it in the same fashion that you would do for yourself. You want for your brother what you want for yourself, but you should want for your own creation what you want for yourself. So, yes, sir. <laughs> Family, again, this is the STEM files, the best <laughs> science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Yes, plant identification, survival yes. ethics, animal husbandry are all necessary sciences for us to mm. understand because your grandmother um, said something very profound to us in the circle before we left. She talked about how she doesn't, didn't like to use the term survival, but really living. Because yes. when you think about, we talk about survival, a lot of the things that we were doing was really just taking us a little bit away from the current, maybe technology that makes it a little bit lazier. We think yes. high living is having everything be easy, but to be able to get mm. your hands in the dirt, to be able to you know, live in and around nature and not in the concrete jungle. We wonder why we're, we're so hot sometimes in the summer you live in the inner city. Well, from a materials perspective, right, that concrete, that steel, it doesn't breathe well. But when you right. where there are trees, where there's nature, where there's foliage, you feel like you're on a whole nother planet. Right, right. You know? And you, you breathe easier. It's a little bit cooler, right? You know what I'm saying? Photosynthesis is happening all around you. Come on, so yes. Talk about everything that, that's going on, family. I, I pray and pray and hope that we're listening, taking notes to support mm. Content, please catch up us at the stem, uh, hashtag the stem files. Um, I want to get into some of these questions. Thank y'all so much. A couple of shout outs to people in the comments. We got Farmer Courtney in the comments. Woo! Uh, comments, Big Bro Bart in the comments. I think this might be my mother, Sister Kimberly Muhammad in the comments, but or Kimberly <laughs> Muhammad in the comments. Um, and we have a couple of questions. So, Brother Bart asked you, he said, I'm late. Though. Brother Bart. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what are the expected costs of taxes, fee, labor, et cetera? You can talk about um, all of them or what you know about at this point. In terms of like your farm and your actual land. Mm, well, let's put it this way. I am still learning the fullness of that. We have just came out of a, co uh, you know, not come out of it, but we've just experienced the first initial impact of the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I'm just understanding what the financial needs are um, because a lot of the things couldn't be really fully discovered um, in the middle of something like that. that can't, I can't get a true understanding of the financial need when we just, you know, a lot of places are not offering certain things as they would do, you know, certain places where you would get hay are not giving the hay. So I have uh, found my own way of figuring this thing out. Um, these animals thrive off the land the way I would want them to. Um, and it keeps my economical uh, pull, uh, uh, push out down. I don't buy hay. I haven't bought hay since the very beginning of this started. You know, we started doing it. We thought we needed it. And I said, you know what? Wait a minute, man. Why am I paying $7 a bale, $8 a bale, $10 a bale? Um, you know, in some places for the for the certain quality, hey, when I can give them the freedom on the land to eat that at their will, as opposed to buying it, it's just grass. That's all hay is, it's grass. So I let them free. And Brother Jabril can be a witness. They were out about all, right. all up in our space. <laughs> so they um they eat from the land, they 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 nourish. They get the nourishments from the from the land, and that has kept my um, my uh, uh, overhead 
down to a minimum, actually nothing as far as the least of food. And I'll start to start to feel the need of that, the, the financial uh, push coming this winter. As we go into the winter, then I got to obviously have stored up pay for them to eat. Then I'll start to experience what it needs because now the winter's coming and certain body things are going to change and certain temperatures will cause things to be more aggressive as far as food and intake and energy. So I'll start seeing that now um, as we head into winter. But as of right now, it's been by law's permission very low um, and the maintenance of the property has probably been the most expensive. And that's just, you know, the maintenance of the land and keeping things from being not too overgrown and things like that. But as far as the livestock has been concerned, they don't eat pellets and we don't give them anything from the store. So it's been fairly, fairly okay. All praise is due to a lot. Praise be to a lot. You mentioned a couple things that were so key. And we had this in private conversation when you talked about the location yeah. of the farm in relation to the weather. And that's a whole mm. other thing when you yeah. talk about having land, having livestock, you become or have to become a, a, a person with a, a, a great understanding of weather. How does your land respond? How do your livestock respond in rain and thunderstorms? In yes. Sea? You just mentioned, okay, they have grass right now. I don't feed them anything artificial, but what happens when it gets cold, my grass mm. may die. So now I transition to the hay and being able to acquire a, a hay farmer or a hay area where though I can give them hay and not have to worry about them struggling through the winter, right? Right. As you, as you start to unplant um, crops and everything, okay, when in the cold, in the in the um, dry season, when it rains, how do you maintain your well-being or your heaven really on earth in these different mm. times? So that's definitely something to keep in mind for all yes. looking to have land up there. Yes. Um, that's a and that's a good question. Uh, we talked about that. Um. Oh, Sister Carol, another question. Um, actually, before before I get there, we um we at the halfway point of the show. See how quickly that was going, bro. Right. Halfway point of the show. <laughs> and, uh, during this time, we like to highlight either a black-owned business or event that mm. we up. So we actually um heard about this on our last show. Um, the second annual STEM Success Summit. This is a virtual conference designed to equip and empower you to launch and build a successful STEM career with purpose. Um, it's the November 19th to the 21st when we had our brother uh, Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah, Nehemiah Marbury on uh, from STEM Media. He um, hit us to this upcoming success summit. For anyone in STEM looking to get involved in STEM, whether it be in entrepreneurship or in industry of some sort, you don't want to miss this uh, awesome summit, awesome event. I know myself and brother Tariq are looking to be, um, to be on and be, and be around and be present to get the gems that people are going to be dropping. Again, that's the second annual STEM Success Summit, uh, um, November 19th to the 21st. Uh, look, be on the lookout for more information on this upcoming STEM Summit on the STEM Files and Original Man Scientific uh, Instagram pages for more information. Um, so with that, uh, going back to Sister Carol, she said, what type of irrigation system do you have for your farm to supply your animals? As far as water? Yes. Oh, good question. Um, sum that up very quickly. Um, the pond is one of the best uh, irrigation systems that we do have. Um, during the, the season when everything was right, as far as the pond, the animals, we, they, they, they merged to the pond. And uh, sometimes still, even with the little water that is there, is a lot, it's a little water in reference to a pond right now. Um, but it's a lot of water in reference to what an animal can get from it. So they still go down to the bottom of the pond and they drink from there, um, which is natural water. We have a well, uh, a well water system where we own the water above, uh, below our feet. No one shares that water with us. It's our water. We own it. No one can take it from us. And as long as we are alive and as long as the world is spinning, the water should be there. <laughs> so we pull from that water. We don't have to worry about a bill so we can supply them with water as long as they need. Um, and uh, during the summer, I literally had like a sprinkler system placed out there for them. And I had it on all day, all night, 24 hours, seven days a week. And animals loved it. It was like their own little fun place. They would go through the 
the boats were really like playing in the water. They were jumping and splash. The ducks were splashing in it, you know. So the animals, you come to find out, there's a lot of characteristics that we share with them. They enjoy the 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 uh, nature in the same way a child will enjoy nature. Their innocence in their maturity as animals is still very much similar to the innocence that a human child has. We right. as older humans grow out of our innocence because we, we decide now, we choose. But the animal, because it doesn't have the free will, it remains innocent. As a 12-year-old cow or a 12-year-old horse, they, are re they remain innocent and their innocence is still very much similar to that of a child that is a human. So as far as her question, we have the well water in the pond that we supply as an irrigation system for them. And um, that's what we use. Wow. So <laughs> family, again, he talk, talking about bills, right? You mentioned how you own your water, well water that supplies not only your family, but all of your you know, livestock, right? So yes. Going back to ownership family, as we talk about the science, you know, we're talking in Islam, there were three core sciences, sciences that we as a people were kept away from or were healthy. Mm. And one of them being the science of mating, another one being the uh, science of warfare, and yes. another one being the science of business. So when we think about business, right, we're talking about just in terms of financials, right? Now, brother doesn't really have, what, a water bill, correct? Right? Don't have a water bill. Don't Praise be to Allah. Not getting water from any water company. He has his well water. And I'm thinking some of us who may be thinking a little bit may be asking this question. Have you tested the pH of your water? And yes. So what, what is that pH for all those who may think, oh my God, is the well water safe? I don't know if I should be drinking it. Well, to be honest, I wish I can give you that information. I don't have it on top hand right now. Okay. okay. But maybe when we do the part two, I'll have that information because for us to purchase this home, it had to be tested. Okay. Um, the water had to be tested um, very, very aggressively uh, based on the particular loan that I've got. Uh, the pH value and the, the water uh, had to be a certain level for us to be able to buy this home. And um, we have a filtration system um, that that water goes through even before it gets to the sink in our mouths. It goes through a, a filtration system, a very extensive filtration system. It goes through UV light, and uh, we just placed a reverse osmosis process on there that also makes the water even more aggressively uh, delicious. <laughs> so it purifies it even further for us. So by the time it gets to the faucet, our water is just as good as Fiji. You wouldn't tell the difference, and I've had believers try it. And I wouldn't even tell them at first. I'll just give them water and say, and, and they'll say, this is some good water. And then they, cause they look at it coming out of a Tropicana cup bottle. You know, we use, keep using the Tropicana bottle. So they're like, wait a minute, where does water come from? And I said, that's our well water. Right. right? And you would never know. So our animals are not just getting any kind of water when they get in the water from the, 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 the holes in the back, they're getting the best water they can possibly get. It's like giving them the best water from the store by the gallon, which nobody would ever do. The majority of the animals on the farm will be drinking rainwater. So they're not even getting that. So, you you know, these animals are producing a certain level of milk that most, uh, I've, I've, you know, I've talked to different believers in a cow based on whatever she's, how she's drinking and how she's eating is causing the milk to be very, very, very delicious. So... Okay. <laughs> I mean, I more than half a gallon in the refrigerator right now. Yes, sir. And the eggs the same way. So we owe that to the way we have been feeding our animals, which has been very natural and giving them water that is very, very purified. So, yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Praise so, be to Allah. Brother Bart, actually, in the comments has another question. I actually asked you something similar, but I have some information in front of us. That we'll just turn his light on, Jabril. Go ahead. Okay, take your time, Mister. So, Brother Bar asks, "Have you ever heard of or been interested in aquaponics?" Yes, I'm very interested. Just need someone with the expertise to talk to me about it. I haven't had the time to go looking into it all together, but I am very interested in it. Um, I know a little bit about it, but not enough. So, um, I can go and study into it and get into it. But if there's anyone out there within this region or 
throughout the nation that would like to contribute their knowledge on that to this property, um, please, by all means, contact me and we can definitely discuss it. Um, so I don't know. I can't say that I do know anything about it outside of her hearing the terminology. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, of course, um, we on the STEM files are not going to leave a term mm -hmm. unpacked or not, not unpacked. Yes. So, uh, basically, aquaponics combines aquaculture or traditional aquaculture with hydroponics. So aquaculture being raising, uh, you know, water life, prawns, crayfish, snails, things like that, and then raising, you know, um, aquatic plant life in a symbiotic relationship. So you can cultivate your plants and have the plants be cultivated from that sea life and, you know, excrement and things of that nature and that being a cyclic type relationship. Wow. So look at that. Brother Bar says you can call me. I'll inbox you my number so we can talk. All praises due to all me. right. <laughs> there we um, go. Yes, sir. On so on that note, you know, we mentioned aquaponics, you know, talk about hydroponics. Again, you have 22 acres. You haven't even tapped the surface on what you're um, able to do. No, sir. For anyone listening that either ha that has an expertise or an interest in something and does not necessarily have the land right now to do it, but if they were given access to land, could do so. What are some sciences that you're looking into bringing onto your land um, in the near future in terms of, you know, making it more productive? Scientist. Scientist or, or, or scientists? Or sciences, like disciplines or, uh, you know, ah. ways, ways to make the, the land useful. Good question. Well, first off, I definitely, because we have an extremely amount of natural flowers and wildflowers, um, the bee. Um, yes. Huh? That's you. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> so that's one. <laughs> that's one. Um, I want someone who, you know, would like to, you know, offer to come here and test the soil um, in ways that, yes, I, I've gotten soil tested, but someone who has a passion in that to test it and know ways to maintain that particular result that is um, beneficial for um, the longevity of vegetation. So someone who has a passion for that, I would say would be something we want. Um, carpenters, reason why I say carpenters, because we need structures on this property that can accommodate livestock, accommodate storage and accommodate other things uh, that will allow us to progress even further. Someone who has knowledge in hoop housing, green houses, that's an extremely important thing on my mind right now. Me and my wife, we have two greenhouses, but those are little baby ones. Those are little 40 by 40 by 10s. Uh, so together is 20 by 80. We want something that's like, you know, not 20 by, it's 20 by 40. We would want something that's more like a hundred foot. You know, I want something that when, you know, we go in there and that thing is all set up and built, that it can remain standing for a very long time. It can withstand the snow and allow believers or individuals from across the nation to come and go in there at any time of the year and get the vegetation that they want, the fruits that they want all year long. So a, basically my desire is to set up a flea market styled hoop house. Wow. So anyone within this area can come into that hoop house and they may be a little register at the, at the front and they can go in and freshly pick their food not food that has already been picked. They have the ability to go pick it. Like a person for Christmas got to go, have the ability to go pick their own Christmas tree or a person at an apple farm to pick their own apples. I want the believers to go and pick their own stream beans and put it on the weight scale and, and then they leave and get their own cabbage fresh out of the soil. So that is something I would love someone with that knowledge to come here, look at the land and say, how many hoop houses can we fit? I know we can fit a lot, but without you know, compromising the rest of the land. Right. Um, and uh, I, I want someone who has knowledge with ponds, you know, knowledge with fish who can come here and say the best type of fish for this type of pond, for this type of area, for the kind of seasons that you have would be good for this, whether that's bass, trout or whatever. Do we need carp? Do we need a catfish type of fish to clean out the pond? Can aquaponics be used within the pond in some sort? You know, right. those kinds of things. Um, so I, I honestly, when you have this much land, all the sciences come in, come in, we are necessary for something like this. Cause it's not just a farm 
This is not what I'm. We're trying to do here. We're trying to build uh, something that can accommodate all the ministries of our nation in yeah. one. So yes, sir. I encourage everybody, all your brains, come and look at it. Let's see what we can do. The only thing I'm not interested in doing is development on this particular land. I don't want to over take the 22 acres and turning it into another city yet. I want this one to be something we can pull from to make another city. <laughs> I like that. So yes. um, again, again, family, if we are not learning, listen, this is again, this is the STEM files. Every Thursday and Saturday, 6 p.m., you bring engineering typically joined by Tariq Cartier, but currently joined by Brother Michael J. H. Muhammad. We are live via Facebook and YouTube on the STEM file files follow us on instagram at the stem files for all of our content um i am being thoroughly fed i'm learning a lot we heard about hydroponics aquaponics uh we talk mm. animal husbandry we talked about um, hoop housing that's the science of uh you know what to bring to a pond and how to apply fish to that pond um beekeeping we also yes. about structures and carpentry and i want to uh Hope my brother uh, Tariq Muhammad is watching because we at Original Man Scientific, which is our parent company and research and development company, have access to working with shipping containers to be able wow. to utilize yes. for uh, projects like this and others. And we want to yes. be the STEM files is literally where we obviously highlight people doing things such as yourself, but we want to extend that network and let people know, you know, black and brown people all over the world and everyone we have. This is a network that you can pull from to do different things you're interested in or need expertise in. So we're looking forward to continuing to work with you, big bro, and hmm. um, help the Praise vision. Be I don't want to see vision, but the vision, because we all have this vision, but now we can see it in front of us. All praise is due to Allah. So that that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> I had a, I had something. It's 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 escaping me though, man. There is something I wanted to add, if I could. Yes, sir. To the, one of the statements you had mentioned, uh, uh, you were talking about, you know, temperatures and our in the animals and how that worked. For all those who may not know, um, you'd be surprised that horses and cows and you know these livestock animals, if you go to farms throughout the country, you'll find or different, you know, wherever you are in the world, you'll see that these animals are out and about through all types of weather. And you might think, oh, that is so, you know, you know, why do that to the animal? Don't, you know, you got them out there in the rain. You'd be some very surprised. The cow would take the rain over shelter. <laughs> mm -hmm. The horse would take rain and snow over shelter their shelter and they would literally stay in the rain. And you wonder why they're warm blooded creatures. They have the ability to uh, to control or manipulate their internal temperatures just like us as humans. They can do things with their body. They can withstand colder weather than us. You'd be surprised that a horse is more comfortable in colder weather than they are in the, in the thick of summer. They are more comfortable in, in temperatures between 30 and 50 degrees. That's cold right, than they right. are of temperatures of 70, 80, 90. They can go as cold as sometimes negative 14. Of course, uh, cows, they rather have some of the cooler weather than the than the hotter weather. So because of their skin and because of their the thickness of their skin, remember, this is the same animal cow that you would get your whole leather from. Right to put on your body to stay warm in the cold. So if that comes from the cow, just imagine the kind of temperatures they can withstand that you and I get comfortable in in our long leather coats. You know, during Savior's Day, we got our trench leather coats and we warm. But that comes off of the body of an animal. So that goes to, that allows you to understand that the farmers are not being mean to the animals. Yes, there's some limitations to that, but these animals will sometimes prefer going outside in the snow and rain than actually being in the shelter. I tested it out. We had just a good rainstorm last night and or this past couple of days. I'm really, I literally went outside to go put them in. They looked at me like, what do you think this is? <laughs> they was out in the rain and they enjoyed it. The whole structure was open for them and they stayed outside instead the entire time. So just to give you that understanding, 
um, to add to that uh, last statement you had. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for that. And you actually Very welcome. Up in, in me. You know, we met, we made mention of it earlier, but I'm, I'm just going to ask the question. So for someone trying to acquire land, oh, I want land, the minister said get land, or, you know, <laughs> with COVID or all this stuff going on, man, I just got to get back to the land to make sure I, I know what's coming into my body in the third. <laughs> When going to acquire land or wanting to, uh, you know, have a farm in particular, can you just go out and, and, and look at any land or is there like, is there um, an easier route versus a harder route depending on what you're looking for? Well, um, for me, you know, I did it. I use technology to get this. Uh, I, 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 you know, I use different things that already exist to find land. If you want land, you can find it. No different if you want, you know, uh, a cast iron pot. You want it, you know where to go. And if you don't know where to go, you'll find where to go. Google, go to Google, ask Google, look into it. Google will tell you. I went on Zillow.com and found this particular property. Zillow is a real estate type of uh, platform for homes and land and houses. And uh, when during my search, we came across this. And yes, there is certain land you don't necessarily need to care for over others, but um, that's you'll find that in your search. And right. that's not something you want to do. You want to think about or weigh your mind on before your search. Go out and search first. Then discover what is for you and what's not for you. But to use that as a reason to, to analyze and overanalyze and overanalyze some more. I need a year, two, three, four, five more years to before I can look into getting a property for myself. By the time you do it, you may not have any property left to get for yourself. So start searching. Motion, then order. Not order, then motion. That's the law of our nature. So you go out and create motion first. Then you go ahead and create some order. I didn't go out looking for order first. You can't even have order before there's something in motion. Order comes after things are there. You Dude, need things in motion before you go out and create order. So I went out and jumped out and I found this and it happened to be 22 acres of the 29 million producing uh, square miles of producing land. And it, it made me think about that. This teaching in such a different light than I've ever seen it before. I said, why did Allah, Master Prophet Muhammad, give us a book going into the square mileage of our, of our planet so that we would know how much of it we claim for ourselves? Oh, you can now say, I can now say, Brother Patrick in, in, in Atlanta or in Georgia can now say he has 30 acres of the 29 million square miles. So now you can decrease that and know that part of that 29 square, uh, million square miles he got 33 acres up. I got 22 acres from it. We put our 22 and our 30s together. We both got 52 acres of it. That's you right. know, and then we keep building. A lot gave us 29 million square miles of producing land. That's we should be trying to find a way to get all of the 29 million out of that uh, 157 million 685,000 square miles of what? Water? Water. How much of that water do I have? I have a half an acre that's 26 feet deep. That is my water. Out of that 57 million, 255,000 square miles of land, I got 22 acres of that land. So I started doing the math and said, man, this is, in in this is interesting. It causes you to understand things in a different light. So yes, there's a big importance in the property you get. You don't want to get something that's full of rocks unless that's what you want. But don't stop at what everybody else go, go look at it. Maybe you might want the rocky land. Some people like it. Some people like the wooded forest. I don't want wooded forest for right now, but I do want some because lumber is a income. <laughs> forest has natural animals. That is also something for you to have. And at the end of the day, it's shelter. You can do things with those trees and lumbers and there's medicinal things, there's plants in it that you can find that you can use that has never been touched by a human because it's so deep in the woods. So it's all based on what you need. But right now, what we do need is land because the brownstone and the townhouses is nice. But if Allah decides to wipe it away in his judgment, 
what are you left with? Mm, come on, talk about it. All praise is due to Allah. Yes, sir. So, brothers and sisters, this has been another edition of the STEM Files. We're approaching the end of the show, actually. Ooh, praise be to Allah. Yes, Michael J. H. Muhammad, owner, owner of MSGLV Farms, talk, talking to us about how to use your land. As we approach mm. the end of the show, brother, and I know we have other questions. Um, we typically like to do what we call the STEM file speed round. Something new that we um we come up wow. with a bit more about our guests, kind of outside of what they do day to day. So I have about 13 or more, you know, questions. And the goal is I'll just I'll ask them and kind of as soon as I ask them, do your best speed. To, to, to answer right then and there. Okay, so let's go. A little bit in between. Sometimes they're not as fast as we would like them to be, but we're gonna do our best and let's go. <laughs> maybe answer one more question. So all right. First thing you do when you wake up in the morning. First thing I do, wake up in the morning, I pray to Allah. <laughs> Hot or cold? Hot. Baked or grilled? Mm. Baked. Okay. Step back or spin move? Spin move. Okay, so I like that. <laughs> Batman or Iron Man? Iron Man. Okay. <laughs> here's, now here's one. I think I know what the answer is. Single-breasted or double-breasted suit? Woo! Double-breasted suit. You, always, you, probably, you be clean with the double-breasted. I'm not single. I got Come on, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Favorite hobby? Favorite hobby. Woo. Creation. <laughs> <laughs> the whole production. We know a lot the creator. Yes, yes. Sir. So, okay. So here's one. Six thousand dollars a week for life or eight fifty credit score. Eight fifty credit score. Why? Because Jay-Z said it best. How did they do it? We don't call those big head bills dollars over here. How did they do it? Credit. I could take that eight fifty credit score. And get all my stuff at once. I ain't got time to wait for six thousand dollars a week. Money changes. <laughs> okay, That's good. I like that. I like that because I, I, we've gotten different questions, different answers on this. Okay, <laughs> J Cole or Kendrick? Woo. Mm. Kendrick. Okay. <laughs> Chris Brown or Usher? Usher, bro. No, no <laughs> come on now. I love them both. That was my personal question. I, I know. I got to say Usher I because it. Usher, but Bree, Bree, Usher over Breezy right now? Right only now. because it wouldn't be no Breezy without Usher, bro. That's true. That's true. But I got to give it to the. I'll, I'll, I'll let you have that. I'll let you have that. Usher's right. still black right now, too. <laughs> yeah, that. Um, um, if you were not a farmer, what would you be? If I was not a farmer, what would I be? Mm -hmm. mm. Lost. Right now, I would. <laughs> to be honest. Now, Tariq always has contention over this one. iPhone or Android? Oh, gosh. I hate both of them <laughs> at different <laughs> times. That one. At different times, but I'll take Apple because Apple's the winner all day. Okay. Unfortunately. Okay. Not that you wear too many shoes now, but favorite pair of shoes of all time. Ooh, favorite pair of shoes of all time would have to be old school man. Timberlands, bro. Straight up. Timberland boots. I was going to say that. Tim's, okay. Tim's, bro. I'm still from the Jersey top, man. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Cat, uh, body weight exercises or lifting weights? Body weight exercises. I like body weight too. Yes. yes Sci-fi or horror? Ooh, horror. Uh, you, you, I can't say horror because horror movies these days been whack. Sci-fi. I'll take sci-fi. Yeah, I, so I love sci-fi. So my wife is a Khalifa's a big horror fan. She always, I love horror. And she'd she be, be like, that's not even scary. I'll be like, some of the joints, I'll be that joint like, oh, yeah. that was corny. But yeah. that right there be having me jump scared. Yeah, horror has been cool. trash lately, so I'll take sci-fi. Okay. <laughs> Last, last question. My name is Michael J. H. Muhammad, and I am a God in making. 
all praise is to <laughs> Well, family, it's that time. This has been another edition of the STEM Files, where we highlight the best and brightest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics as the voice of STEM talent in Black culture. I am one of your co-hosts, Jabril Muhammad, aka Jabrilian Engineer, joined by my big bro, brother Michael J. H. Muhammad. Um, anything you'd like to leave our family with, beloved, before we uh go to next, uh, go to uh oh, we get off. Excuse me. Well, I would say this: since this is your platform, keep coming back to this platform. Everybody that's on here, continue to support STEM files. Continue to tune into STEM files. Continue to share, repost the STEM files because uh, this is something that will live in the next uh, next world. So this is uh, their uh, brick in our new world. So continue to support them. Continue to make them great. And outside of watching any other thing or going to any other thing, tune into STEM files instead. Praise be to a lot. And where can everyone reach you for more information about what you do? You can go to at MSGLV Farms on Instagram. And once you put that in, there's a bunch of different little MSGLVs. We have MSGLV underscore INC, MSGLV underscore science underscore medicine, and MSG the beat, MSGLV the beat, which is our radio where we do a lot of major things, have artists of our nation playing in different interviews with some of the major people of our nation. So there you go. <laughs> All praise to Salah. Well, family, thank you for tuning in. Uh, look forward to our next show this coming Saturday, where we will be announcing who will be on that show later on this week. Thank you. Stay blessed. And this has been The STEM Files.